Thank you, Gina. It is, I'm so happy to be back in Suriname. It's just like coming home again. July 2010, the worst flooding of a decade caused by the Yangtze River in China, killing over 700 people and destroying over 600,000 homes. The cause, urban construction, destruction of catchment areas, deforestation, and a disruption of the natural balance of fragile ecosystems. August 2017, a catastrophic mudslide in Sierra Leone killed more than 500 people when heavy rainfalls caused mudslides on the deforested slopes of Mount Sugarloaf, about five miles from Freetown. We're at the edge of an environmental breakdown Polar ice caps are melting, sea levels are rising, and unseasonal storms and tsunamis are battering our planet. It is as if nature is finally saying that our time is up and is hitting back. Time and again, our frailty is exposed when confronted with nature's fury. But instead of taking note, the human race continues to raise virgin rainforests, burning fossil fuels that choke our skies, and having industry spew millions of tons of chemicals that poison our oceans, rivers, and lakes. It is our future that is at stake, and it is time for young people to take the leadership role in stopping this environmental degradation and create the future we want. Good morning, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Gehekusha, I'm 18 years old, and I am truly honored to speak to you today as the voice of future generations. Every young person has the capability of being a change maker. All we need is an opportunity. The 2018 IPCC report clearly states that this is the final call for all of us. However, the world cannot achieve its targets without actions from individuals. You, me, everyone. This is no longer remote science or something for just governments to take actions on. It requires collective action at all levels. It requires a change in lifestyle a change in consumption patterns, and most importantly, a change in mindset. We children and youth are amongst the largest sectors of civil society, and 87% of us live in developing nations. We're also the fastest growing sector of civil society, and yet we continue to face challenges to our development. There exists a huge opportunity gap that continues to widen every day. And our engagement and empowerment is therefore critical to the success of sustainable development, especially in terms of environmental conservation. And this is the vision of Green Hope Foundation, a social innovation enterprise which I founded in 2012 to enable young people to be the drivers of environmental conservation and become the catalysts of change in their local communities. We use education for sustainable development as a transformative tool since that holds the key to empowering young people. And we connect STEM and STEAM with environmental conservation. I developed an advocacy tool which I named Environment Academy, which is essentially a workshop organized by children for children. And we have hosted over 150 academies in over 25 countries to date, directly educating more than 20,000 young people. And we use creative ways like art, dance, music, drama, and sports to reach out to these children. 
And we complement our academies with ground level actions. For example, planting more than 20,000 trees all over the world. Mangrove conservation is very close to our hearts. Hence, we've planted more than 2,000 mangroves in the Middle East, in the Sundarbans, which is the largest mangrove forest of the world, and here in Suriname. Our members go door to door spreading awareness about the importance of environmental conservation. They've distributed solar lamps across villages in India, Bangladesh, Nepal. We work on protecting endangered marine species, such as turtles, and have conducted turtle rehabilitation campaigns in the UAE, in Oman, and in the Sundarbans. Now, it is extremely important for us to engage the marginalized sections of the world, especially the marginalized children, because their empowerment is key to the success of sustainable development. Green Hope believes in leaving no one behind and achieving a life of dignity for all. And hence, we engage the marginalized children from the Syrian refugee camps, from the Rohingya refugee camps, the children of the prisoners and HIV-positive children in Nepal, and the children from war-torn Sudan who have now sought refuge in Malaysia. And through our environment academies, we explain to them how they can take environmental actions in their own zones of influence, turning them into environmental guardians who are now making huge ground-level impacts. Now, one of the greatest threats to environmental stability is war and strife and the threats to global peace as a consequence of the escalating nuclear arms race. Critical resources are being diverted to build weapons of mass destruction instead of being used to solve the world's most pressing problems such as education, healthcare, youth empowerment, environmental conservation, creating jobs. Peace is therefore the most important ingredient for sustainable development, the empowerment of us young people and for making a better order wherein young people can define their own destiny and create a world where economic progress, the society and the environment achieve a harmonious balance. It is now time for us to take action. Our forests are turning into deserts. Pollution is destroying our rivers and oceans pushing thousands of species to the brink of extinction. We are running out of clean drinking water, and the impacts of climate change have given rise to a new term, climate refugees. Millions of people have been displaced and have lost their homes and livelihoods as a direct consequence of climate change and environmental degradation. Look at these contrasting images. On the left is beautiful green Suriname. And on the right is a hot, desolate, barren, parched land without a twig of grass or greenery in sight. That landscape, which looks like it's from Mars, actually exists on Earth a few thousand miles away. It is the run of Kutch in India. These little girls in the picture don't go to school. They don't have shoes and therefore walk with bare feet across the hot and rocky soil. So I ask you, what kind of future are these little girls looking forward to? The answer to that lies within each and every one of us. Every country in the world will look like the run of Kutch if we don't take actions right now. The dream of a sustainable world will be realized only when we bridge the gap between the haves and the have-nots. It will be realized when all genders have equal rights, when everyone has access to education. I call upon the youth to understand 
that protecting our environment is no longer a choice. It is a responsibility. We must preserve the last remaining forest resources of our planet in the HFLD countries. We are the last generation that has the opportunity to take actions before it is too late. History will either remember us for preserving our planet or condemn us for our complacence and indifference. So rise up and take actions to preserve and conserve our planet for future generations. If you do not, then the alternate scenario is absolutely terrifying. This is the picture of a little girl, Mehendi. She is a five-year-old Rohingya refugee child living with more than a million people in cramped, dismal conditions in Kutubalong, the world's largest refugee camp, situated in Bangladesh, where I spent last Christmas with my team. Together, we planted several saplings as a mark of hope for the future. Do we not owe it to our children and grandchildren to leave them a world as pristine and lush as the one that we inherited? Remember the words of Pope John Paul II, who once said, the earth will not continue to offer its harvest except with faithful stewardship. We cannot say we love the land and then take steps to destroy it for use by future generations. We, the youth, are the citizens of today and tomorrow. But we will not live to see our tomorrow if our today is not taken care of. So let us shake off this veil of complacency and indifference and act with decisiveness to safeguard the rights of future generations. If not for yourself, then do it for your children. Thank you.